Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Engaging the Phenomenon. And today, I just wanted to make a short, but I think important video in regards to uh, human-initiated contact events, CE5, or contact modalities, whichever you prefer. And that is that, you know, CE5, let's say, human-initiated contact, you know, it doesn't necessarily end or even begin with the CE5 protocols or, or whatever contact modalities that you're using uh, to interact with the UFO phenomenon. So I want to kind of qualify this in, in a way or, or discuss some empirical observations over the years. And that's that, you know, generally speaking, what people are expecting and assuming um when you when you say you're going to do CE5 or you're going to do a CE5 and and I get the the reasoning behind this right you don't know unless you've done it and and had extended experience in the field um but you know again often people will say oh I'm going to do a CE5 they go through whatever protocols that they are familiar with or that they've learned or that they're experimenting with and they'll do uh, the protocols for 20 or 30 minutes and then, you know, look out into the sky for a sky watch, right? See if they see anything that seems to occur in consequence to their their protocols or the human-initiated contact with the UFO phenomenon. And, you know, again, th this can go down so many ways, and I'm trying to just make an example of this, but something can happen literally instantaneously, right? As soon as you step outside, the second that you look into the sky, something kind of pretty obvious can occur and you're like, wow, okay, that was a direct kind of response um, from the UFO phenomenon um, in regards to, you know, a human or us trying to reach out and, and interact with, you know, said protocols or contact modalities. So all that's very possible. I mean, you could sit out there for three hours and an hour into the process of sky watching. Maybe you continue to the exercises and practices and protocols, maybe not. Uh, but, you know, nonetheless, an hour later, some activity starts, right, in a section of the sky or maybe even all over the sky, right? There's a lot of different ways that this can go down. That's all very possible. However, another possibility is that you go out, you know, say you spend two hours preparing, you do two hours of protocol straight, right? Just boom. And, you know, you go out and sky watch for two or three hours and nothing happens. And, you know, it could be bummed out, right? If you if you don't have the experience and know how this goes down sometimes, uh, you know, you can be a little bummed out and be like, oh man, nothing happened. And, you know, maybe you do the protocols later on the weekend and nothing happens, or maybe you get one little quick flash bulb and that's it. And then you, you, you just, for whatever reason, you're not doing the protocols, you're not doing the exercises, you're kind of going about your life uh, a week later and boom, out of nowhere, you get out of your car or you step out of your house, or maybe you, you feel kind of like pulled or compelled to go out of your house. Uh, you look in the sky or even near the trees or whatever it is um, in your yard, and there's some kind of anomalous activity and it's very blatant, it's very direct, it's very obvious. And there's an interactive quality to it with your your thoughts and your thinking process and and your feeling too. Actually, very important. You know, so that that has happened so many times, right? Um, and there's also the idea that you know, say you're planning a CE five, whether a solo CE five or with a group, and you know, all of a sudden. You know, you don't even do the protocols. You don't do the exercise. It's just kind of in your head. You're going to do it. You have a good feeling about it. And you're just going to go look at the sky, kind of see if it's cloudy, if the sky's clear, what the arrangements of the stars are, or what have you, right? You're just going to go look at the sky real quick or whatever it may be. And you step out and, or, you know, you look out into the sky or into your immediate area and there's some kind of activity going on. Um, you know, UFO activity or anomalous activity that's occurring, you know, blatantly right in front of you 
immediately after you're looking outside or maybe even after a few moments, but yet you haven't done the protocols or any of the exercises. It just happened, right? And I want to argue that, you know, part of the reasoning for this, obviously I can't answer all of it because the UFO phenomenon ultimately has the know-how and the reason for that directly. But based on my experience and what I've observed over the years and speaking to thousands of witnesses, you know, because of the, the, the core aspect and the nature of, of how CE5 works uh, to my best assessment is consciousness. Um, it seems to be what people consider, um, you know, telepathy or precognition or in quantum entanglement where your, your intention is able, your, you know, concentrated and, and directed intention is able to, you know, get the attention of the UFO phenomenon. And because it's based in that kind of consciousness, um, you know, non-locality aspect of as we've come to know it, um, where time and space is more malleable than previously considered, um, at least in regards to some of these experiences, you know, because the 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 nature and the root of the you know CE five or human initiated contact interfaces with um, consciousness, it, it, it therefore seems that you know the interaction with the UFO phenomenon is also not limited to linear time, you know, or even time space the way that we know it, because the UFO phenomenon seems to defy all these kind of borders and, and you know, lines that we've drawn in place and seems to just completely either bend them or, or break them at other times and, and doing some pretty incredible things. So, you know, based Based on all that, I really think that the reasoning for this with contact and the interactions and interactivity is that, you know, UFO intelligence has a way to interact through consciousness and because of that can seemingly transcend our current understanding of the law of physics and again, the way that we look at space time is probably very limited to the way that they do, right? They, the UFO phenomenon, phenomena. So I, I still do think, again, and this is my opinion, I, I'm, I appreciate contact work. I think it's an important thing that needs to be explored. Uh, it needs data collection. Um, but I, I also do highly regard the idea that if there is another intelligence, why wouldn't we interact with it if it's already here, seemingly in some scenarios interacting with us? Why not open a dialogue or try, try, right? Try to engage the phenomenon, try to interact with it at the very least to, to learn new things and make new discoveries about ourselves, if not for a kind of bigger picture, like let's have a communication with this other intelligence and, and go from there, right? Um, so that that interactive quality um, that seems to transcend what we consider linear physics and why I say contact um, doesn't either begin or end with CE5, the CE5 protocols or contact modalities is because it doesn't, right? It's not limited to that little, the little box of CE5 and what we consider contact. And that's some of what we're talking about with interactivity. And it almost seems like there's a feedback loop um, with the phenomena, with the phenomenon. Um, and it's highly interactive, you know, based on your thoughts, your beliefs, um, your frameworks, and your background. And it seems to interact in symbolic ways at times, but also in ways that seem to stretch our perception and could be guiding us towards a certain understanding. You know, and, and and that's me being optimistic as I generally am. So, you know, I think it's important for us to keep an open mind and to not limit what we consider contact or interactivity with um, CE5, the CE5 protocols and doing a, a, a short process and then seeing a light in the sky or, you know, have, even having a download or whatever it is. 
and that short interaction that takes place right there and right then. The contact is way bigger than that, right? It happens in all these different ways and what Dr. Jalen Hynek and, and Jacques Vallée called high strangeness because it's not limited to the limiting aspects that we try to put on it to try to understand it, which is useful. We need that to try to understand it, but we also at that same time have to kind of be open and see that this interactivity is happening in all different ways. Um, you know, whether it be synchronicities, lucid dreams, um, precognition that involves UFOs. Um, so you have all these things interplaying at the same time. And that's all part of contact. So again, that's why I'm saying that the the, the um, contact and, and CE5 really is not limited to the CE5 protocols. And it, you know, it doesn't begin or end with the protocols, right? It doesn't begin or end with CE5. It's really a part of something much bigger, which uh, me and my colleague and people will know are calling interactivity, but that, that's, again, that's another process. That's kind of how I'm framing it here. Um, but again, I think these are important ideas. I think it's very important to keep your, to keep your mind open and not limit the contact to how you, you think it's going to happen. You have to keep an open mind to let it happen as it's going to and recognize it for what it is when it does occur which could be tricky. And you, again, if, if you don't learn that at the beginning, the UFO phenomenon will keep nudging you and prodding you until you get it. I, I think in all these different ways. And I'll, oftentimes it's not until you're reflecting on a lot of these experiences, you know, weeks or months or even years later, and it clicks, you're like, Oh my God. Right. Um, in like a kind of like micro comparative analysis that you're doing in your mind, right? Or even comparing to other cases that you might be familiar with from other experiencers. Um, so again, that's just um, my short take here. I can probably just ramble on about this for an hour. I don't want to do that to you guys. This is just a short and sweet video. Um, contact NCE5 and HICE, human initiated contact events, do not begin or end with the CE5 protocols or any kind of short process like that. It's, it's much bigger and there's a high strangeness to it. There's a process of integ integration that you have to go through to integrate a download or what you've observed and the realizations that you've had from the contact. And then there are just some off the wall kind of things that, that can occur that you have to recognize when they do occur. So again, don't limit your train of thought of what contact should be or how it should happen. Um, it's going to happen in the way that it will. And you have to just do, make your best, uh, do your best to make sense of it and, um, you know, stretch your own boundaries. So I hope you guys appreciated this. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.